So are there are there tax benefits for those communities that would would, would house the parks? A and B um, on those tax benefits would there be uh, benefits that come from like out of state companies because they'd be purchasing that power from Arizona? You know, I think you know w the the credits would be along the same kind of lines of what we've done with the. Uh, to incentivize the manufacturing of solar power plants here. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, part of that, part of what's gonna make that manufacturing work is having the energy needs uh, where they're producing solar fields here in Arizona as well as other states. And so you can kind of create a, uh, a synergy around the energy business here in the state of Arizona. So, uh, so you have that, in th you have those incentives uh, for communities uh, some of the biggest incentives are going to be the, the jobs that it creates for those communities it, 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 and it brings that money into those economy. Uh, we can look at uh, where they're building nuclear power plants and they, they bring in thousands, not just hundreds, but thousands of jobs. Thousands of jobs during the building of the plant though, so you, and that's about a 10 year process uh, from groundbreaking to start up. Uh, you know, then you also have the, uh, the energy, the, the energy parks with the solar power where those are creating new jobs and with the wind power I mean there's, there's a whole synergy that can be created it, it's great for the state you're, you're going to have the ability to to uh, ha have our universities getting involved with the training of the workforce with nuclear engineering I mean there is just an, a ton of opportunities available uh, nuclear power, one of the nice things about nuclear power is also if we can get to the recycling phase of that where we can u utilize recycled uh, nuclear uh, energy, the, the nuclear waste can be recycled so that we can use up to 95% of that, of that fuel source and produce very little waste, it almost becomes a renewable source of energy. Is, does the infrastructure exist for us to be able to to transport this energy from, let's say, whatever um, energy park that would be in existence to, to, let's say, send it to another state or send it to other parts of the community, or would that have to be enhanced also? No, that would definitely have to be enhanced. And so, uh, you know, the line, you know, that's part of the bill is where we're looking at how to enhance the ability to get those lines sited and that so that we can uh, carry that energy to where it needs to be in the state. and. You know, and it, quite frankly, I think the state, it's about time we start looking at it. We, we're a big state. We've got a lot of land available to us. Uh, the whole western region is going to need a lot more energy in the future, and, and there's no reason why Arizona shouldn't be the producer of that energy and reap, those, um, reap that income from that energy. And, and that would go a long way in helping us with our schools and our universities and, and, and providing the education for our children. As well as as jobs and uh, and and clean energy for for us to, to work here in, in the state. Some are prognosticating that we could have an energy shortage in the future. Uh, what are you, what would you tell the folks uh, at AGC about the potential for an energy shortage down the road? I think that what we need to be careful of is that we don't let the infrastructure get get behind. I mean, there are there are, there are just right now with the growth that our state has. The energy needs of our state are going to grow, but like I said earlier, we have to be careful uh, from the federal regulations because if if the Environmental Protection Agency has their way, they could be closing down some of the coal-powered uh, generation that we have. For instance, right now the one that they're looking at the hardest is the Navajo generating plant. That provides a, an awful lot of energy for the state. In fact, the Central Arizona Project, which delivers water to the central part of the state and to a lot of the farmers, uh, they the energy to pump that water up the hill to the Central Arizona regions, uh, most of that energy comes from that particular plant. If they shut that plant down, they're going to have to look other elsewhere to find energy to be able to pump that water up, which is going to add to the expense of that water. It, which is going to be passed down to cities and towns and farms, uh, which is going to increase uh, the cost to the citizens who use water from that, the cost to the farmers who use the water from that. You could see uh, there's some predictions that uh, the price of farm products could double because of the uh, 
increase need for that. And that could happen within the next four, four to five years. So that's something that we're very looking at, uh, keenly looking at to make sure it doesn't happen. Uh, but so, so the, the need is immediate as well as long term to have new sources to produce energy for the needs of this state. Is, is, is the water used for cooling specifically nuclear? Obviously, with solar you have some issues. I read in the Republic the other day about water. H how does water from a cooling standpoint, not, not, just the, uh, not just the scarcity standpoint upstream, but how about uh, water for the cooling piece? How does that play into it as far as scarcity is concerned? Well, the, uh, you know, we've talked to several folks and we believe the water is available for, for nuclear power. Um, talk, I've talked to the solar, solar people uh, you know, they don't, they don't need a lot of water, you know, you, the water's just basically, depends on what kind of source they have, but if you're just using the, uh, the photosynthetic, the, you don't need a lot of water. If they're, if they're heating water up, then, of course, you need a lot of water, but the, uh, as far as the water goes, uh, the, uh, there's two ways you can build these plants. Now, they do have plants where they can basically recycle that water, kind of like a, like your, engine does with the radiator water you know and it produces it and it cools it back down and they run it through they can they can do that that's a much more expensive process than having water flow in and out of it but we do have a lot of wa water available the uh, the Palo Verde plant uses water from uh, wastewater from the city of Phoenix and so there's groundwater that we have available that's brackish water that we could that we could use to uh, that that can't be used for drinking. It's not really potable water that could also be used to for these plants.